Good morning, everybody. My name is Joseph Feynman. I am Chief Innovation Officer of Vericode, and the subject of today's presentation is right in front of you on your screen. It is stop living in the past. Stop living in the past. You have to find a new approach to application security. So the question comes up, why do you need that new approach? So we'll go through the several key issues. The first one, we'll try to find out why traditional application security fails us, fails existing new demands for application security. And we'll go through discussions, we'll try to find out why it's happening. And once we establish it, we need to find out what kind of new application security you and we, all of us, need. So we'll go through a set of criteria to figure out what kind of application security the future demands from us. And we'll show you some examples of emerging technologies that actually fulfill new emerging needs. And once we're done with that, we'll try to look into the future, into the next several two, three, five years, and see what future holds for us and for application security. Our main challenge that we're facing, that entire application security is facing, is called DevOps. DevOps is a new paradigm. I'm pretty sure that most of you are familiar with them. Let us take a look at DevOps requirements, see what DevOps wants. First of all, it requires multiple releases per day. You remember time when, uh, uh, while it was requested from us to, to deliver new release of an application once a year, once in eight or 10 months. Nowadays, some leading organizations deliver several releases per day, and they demand rapid results, measured not in months and days, but actually in seconds, minutes, sometimes hours. When it comes to the application development cycle, they go through this continuous development, deployment, testing, development, testing, deployment, and testing should be done multiple times through the day. And that is demand not only for quality or functionality testing, it is demanded from application security testing as well. All this requires deep collaboration between DevOps and security. So security could be embedded into the DevOps cycle, and it requires high degree of automation to assure higher accuracy of detection and then prevention, as well as rapid process through the life cycle. That's what DevOps requires from everyone, including security. Now, let us take a look what traditional application security offers. First of all, you'll see the gap between DevOps and SAC. Developers don't have direct access to application security. This is most typical. Therefore, they use intermediary, some group that is dedicated to application security and submitting security testing request, for example, and getting result back takes very often several days. Compare it with the three deployment releases per day, and you would see that DevOps cannot live with that kind of security. And this security test, if we're speaking of security testing, they're typically done mostly before application security deployment, and that causes a lot of problems. Imagine you run through your life cycle, you're ready to deploy your application, and now you run a test and you detect the security vulnerability. So what do you have to do? You have to go to the beginning of life cycle. You have to reanalyze your application and end user requirements. You have to redesign part of the application, at least. You have to reprogram part of the application and then retest it both for quality as well as for security because you actually changed application code. It takes way too much time, way too much effort. You delay greatly your application deployment. So many organizations simply don't do application security testing at all. So these are responses of traditional application security. But security overall is no better. If you look at traditional security, overall security, and I mean, first of all, 
network security, peripheral security to applications. They lack application insight. These firewalls of different kinds, such as network firewalls, or even web application firewalls, or endpoint protection system, they can analyze application traffic, but they cannot see inside the application. They don't understand logic flow, they don't understand data flow, they don't see how application opens a database, retrieves data, processes data. They don't even understand the composition of the application. They are dealing only with the user interface, visual or non-visual interface, not understanding that behind that interface there is a complex composition of multiple components in the application. In other words, these traditional peripheral to application security technologies see application as a black box. They don't understand it. They don't see it inside. How can they protect something that they don't see and understand? These are challenges that application security and traditional overall security is facing when it comes to securing DevOps cycle and securing applications. So now once we understand these challenges, let us take a look at security that we need to address DevSecOps critical criteria. The first one is transparency. Security must be transparent to programmers, testers, and operations specialists. Remember, what are main objectives of development and operating specialists? It's not security, definitely. It's functionality, first of all. It's to deliver functionality right, right in time and under budget. So the next priority would be probably quality of that application and then performance of application but not security, definitely. The only type of security that DevOps will adopt is security that is transparent to Dev and Ops, that would not stop them from doing what they do, Dev and Ops. Please don't misunderstand me. Developers and operating specialists should still learn and apply best programming practices and best deployment and operation practices. But you should not be enforcing them into running that complex, heavy, sophisticated security technologies machinery. Don't have to run, they should not run technologies such as application security testing or application security testing. Transparency is criteria number one. The next criterion would be incremental approach to security. We've just seen a couple of minutes ago that most organizations, if they do application security testing, for example, they do it only once or a couple of times right before deployment in the end of life cycle. That is no good for continuous DevOps cycle. So security technology should be modernized in such a way that should be able to test the smallest increments of an application, just a few lines of the code, the smallest file, the smallest snippet of the code. And after that, technology should be continuous. It should be applied not at the end of the life cycle, but throughout the life cycle, every time when developer or operating specialists need to invoke such a technology. Also, continuous implementation of security technologies means that it has to run not only at dev part of the cycle, but of ops part of the cycle. Remember, with a traditional developer, with traditional development, at development phase, only testing is being done. But now, when DevOps is a single cycle, well, Security should address at depth, which is detection of vulnerabilities, and security should be addressed at ops part of the life cycle, which means we need to embed in the life cycle also protection technologies that would protect the application against attacks. The next major criteria is rapid implementation. The response time of this technology should be measured in seconds and minutes rarely in hours, but not in many hours, not in days, definitely not in weeks. And the last criterion, I believe we spoke of it already, is insight. We need new technologies that have deep insight into application, 
into application logic and data flow. So that's what you see on the screen. Transparency, incremental approach, continuous security, rapid security, security with insight into applications. So once we understood these criteria, let us take a look at the market and see what market, innovative market, brings us in that regard. The first technology I'm going to talk about is what I call developer SaaS. Well, there are, I would say, two versions, two versions of technology that are coming to the market to support DevOps. There are some technologies that have been invented from scratch to develop, to, de to, to support DevOps. There are other technologies that existed before but has been modified to address DevOps issues. And developer SaaS is such a technology. It's a variation, a flavor of well-known, one of the most fundamental security technology called SAS, Static Application Security Testing. This is the technology that analyzes application source or byte and binary code that works like compiler, detects vulnerabilities, and reports them to you. The problem was that traditional SAS has always been used or traditionally used and the right-hand side of the life cycle to provide complete coverage of the application. And we discussed it several times already today that it's inconvenient, it's insufficient to do it just before deployment. So market innovators have come up with a new technology. I, I call it here developer says at developer's fingertips. This technology is typically plugged into your ID, into developer's ID. So developer simply can press a button on the menu or even simpler, once he or she runs the compilation of the code, that code upon completion of compilation will be sent for testing. And it's typically sent into the cloud, which makes it completely transparent. So cloud services will do testing for you and just deliver your results. So as a developer, you should keep doing your development. You don't have to learn this technology. You don't have to install it, run it, and be responsible for results. You only need to understand results, interpret them, and fix the vulnerability. And this technology is incremental now. It has been improved to such a way that it can test the smallest snippets of the code, the just a few lines, you finish programming a few lines of the code, you can test the code, detect the vulnerability, and fix it right away. And because it works with increments, it's rapid. Actually, the response time, the turnaround time, is measured in just seconds, sometimes minutes. So developers do this testing continuously, programming piece of code, submitting for test, the test comes back, they fix vulnerabilities, they submit for another test. If there is no vulnerabilities anymore, then, then deploy it. They commit the code into the shared repository where they all together work on builds. And their new flavor of SAS is coming. I call it here Team SAS that runs when the new build is ready. So it has builds. It works very rapidly. Of course, it's not seconds anymore, but it very often just some minutes, but in parallel, developers keep working with the developer test, testing individual pieces of code that in the end, they add to repository to increase the size and functionality of the build. And once the build is ready, an application is ready, practically complete, it moves into the final testing it moves into final testing when system test is being applied. And system test is your traditional static analysis that tests your complete application. Right, it would not run minutes. It runs often many hours, but I have a good news for you. Our research shows that for about two thirds of all application, uh, testing will be done within one hour, which is very good for DevOps development. And this time you're testing complete application, you're testing it less time, and security testing system is integrated now with the defect system, GRC system, policy system. So you're not only making your application compliant, not only secure, but also compliant with internal and external regulations. So what you see on this slide is 
traditional static analysis that typically runs on the right-hand side of that life cycle at the end in pre-deployment has now offered three variations, three flavors, developer SaaS, team SaaS, and all good traditional SaaS. So it combines immediacy of results with a complete transparency, with continuous implementation, doesn't end hundreds of times through the life cycle, with a team development when the group works around the build, and the final test that makes not only secure, but compliant. Now, let us take a look at another type of technology that has been developed from scratch, and it's focused on protecting and monitoring application at ops part, at operation. The technology is called RASP, a runtime application self-protection. And that's what it is. See on the screen, you have your traditional application server. More specifically, I'm speaking of um, runtime environments such as Java Virtual Machine or JVM or .NET CLR for Microsoft Platform or some uh, PHP runtime engine. And RASP is an agent that gets seamlessly instrumented, integrated into your runtime environment, into your JVM, for example. It becomes its integral part. It gets access to entire environment, and it is capable to see every piece of data coming into the application, entry flow of application logic. And because of that, it's perfectly equipped to distinguish good benign behavior from attacks. And if it's an attack, it can stop an attack, for example, by being part of runtime environment, it will stop an attack by not executing next malicious instruction or by sanitizing input. Very important thing, there are no changes to application code. It's an only agent that makes by itself another feature of your runtime environment. So why this technology is good for DevOps? Well, it is transparent to developer and operating specialists. They are not to see, need to see REST because there is nothing to see. As a developer, well, you don't learn your Java virtual machine. Um, you don't need to learn the REST because there is nothing to learn. You are not learning features of JVM in detail, such as um, memory management. So why would you learn the REST? There is nothing to learn there for a developer or operating specialist. There is no need to manage request for REST because there are no requests. REST is simply running all the time once it is installed, unless you stop it quite deliberately. And it is rapid. The results are instantaneous. It offers higher accuracy because RASP has deep insight into application. So we are facing here a phenomenon, a application self-protection phenomenon, when application for the first time has capability to protect itself without solely relying on peripheral technologies such as endpoint protection or network firewalls or web application firewalls. Are there challenges here? Yes, there are a number of challenges that we can discuss if you wish, but the most important one is technology immaturity. We believe that it would take another five years for RASP to mature. And now let us move back from operations and let me show you how RASP can work not only for protection and monitoring, but also for testing. And in that case, it's called IS, Interactive Application Security Testing. So you would see the very same server, although used not for production, but for testing. And the very same agent gets instrumented into the server. It has complete insight into logic data flow. It can report results. The only thing is missing is hacker. There are no hackers at test time. Therefore, we need to simulate a hacker. And that hacker inducer, the simulation, comes typically in several flavors. One of them, you can use DEST, your dynamic application security testing, as, a, as an inducer to launch simulated attacks. Or you could have an embedded attack generator, embedded inducer. Or you can simply use your quality assur assurance and user accept and test as an inducer. So what are you getting from uh, IS, from interactive testing at uh, test runtime? Well, high accuracy because RASP or IS agent, which is the same in most cases, 
uh, has a deep insight into application. The human involvement, involvement from a developer or tester is absolutely minimal. There is no need to run an agent, it's always running. You need, of course, to run an inducer, but it can be automated. A REST agent is always running, which is a good thing. Once you install it, it's going to test the application. There is a minimal latency with it, and this technology is always at developer's fingertips. You deploy your application. You want to get tested on the IS instrumented server, and it will be tested under some or another inducer. Challenges? Well, the very same challenge in maturity. We believe that it would take somewhat around three years, three to five years for this technology to mature as well. So uh, we saw developer tests, team tests, uh, um, we saw system tests, we saw RASP NIS, and there is one more technology that I want to mention, technology which important has jumped quite substantially over the last several years. This technology is SCA, is Software Composition Analysis. It analyzes application for the presence of third-party components. It's actually a metadata repository that contains information of maybe several millions of different components from thousands, typically open source projects. And technology, SCA, compares that metadata repository against your code repository. And then when it finds the match, it says, oh, I know that component, it has a, whatever, SQL injection, or it, it's uh, infected with a heart bleed. So now you know that your supply chain, at least one element of your supply chain, is insecure, and, uh, well, you should remove uh, that component from your development process. That is the strong side of uh, SCA. Well, there are challenges there also. And I believe that the main challenge is that it's not a testing technology. It doesn't test the application. It doesn't have insight into the code. It doesn't have insight into application. It's a tagging technology, inventorying technology that tags components with knowledge taking from some uh, available sources such as national vulnerability database. Well, to mitigate that challenge, we would recommend you to use SCA along with a static analysis, along with SAS. So SAS technology would analyze the application, detect the code, which is homegrown, homewritten, detect open source components, and ask SCA to figure out were these components good or bad. And if they're good, bad, replace them. Now, let us take a look how all these technologies come together to address DevOps requirements, to cover the entire life cycle. We're starting from the left, and there you'll see DevOps enable static analysis, something that we call, remember, developer SAS and team SAS, where individual developers and developers in team can work on developing individual pieces of the code, snippets of the code, as well as application build. And they would continue this process with using system SAS that will test application in its complexity in its entirety and make sure that it's not only secure but also compliant. You would use SCA, the software composition analysis, to make sure that you are not using insecure components. Then when your application should be tested in its runtime state, you would use either DEST separately, dynamic application security testing, a technology that will be launching attacks, simulated attacks against your application, or you can use IS with embedded um, attack generator with, or with a, some test scenario, or you can use IS and DEST in a combination. It is up to you have choices there. And for operations, you can use RESP for protection. So you have technologies now either completely built from scratch or modified to support DevOps requirement. Just use them at the right place. So when it comes to the status of this technology, I believe we outlined criteria and made examples, give example of these criteria, but let us take a look of what future holds 
for application security. We made several predictions. We based this prediction on the analysis of about 300,000 applications that we analyzed over the last couple of years. Uh, it is based on analysis of about 2,000 um, enterprises, organizations that either use security technologies, application security technologies, or plan to use them. And we came to conclusion, for example, that by 2018, use of SAS and DAS as a cloud service will exceed use of SAS and DAS as a tool. You know that there was a long multi-year competition between tools and services. Tools, static and dynamic testing emerged. First of all, organizations started adopting them. Very soon they realized that this is a do-it-yourself model. When you have to buy technology, install it, learn how to use it, or hire people that know how to use it, um, run these technologies and be responsible for accuracy and breadth of coverage. For most organizations, it's an overkill. They cannot find people, they cannot scale, so they ended up with the testing just maybe one or just a few applications from their application portfolio, leaving dozens or even hundreds of applications untested. Well, therefore, a new delivery model has emerged, which is a cloud delivery of static and dynamic testing. When you don't have to buy anything, learn anything, you simply submit a request and you get the results of the test. We believe that practically while we're speaking, um, the security as a cloud service has already outpaced use of security as a tool, and that trend will continue. So if you have a choice between tools and services, our recommendation is to use services. They provide much higher level of transparency, which is required by DevOps, and of course, they are much more scalable. Another prediction, uh, we believe that 2020, more than quarter of enterprises that adopt the DevOps will also adopt developer static analysis. Well, it is pretty obvious, I believe, developers, DevOps specialists need continuous development and testing of increments of any size, smallest, larger, largest, and so to the end. And developer SAS, along with the team SAS, gives you that opportunity to deploy your application security continuously through life cycle with a turnaround time measured in seconds and minutes. This is going to happen definitely. The only practical obstacle here is the immaturity of this developer and team SAS, but it will peak in maturity pretty rapidly. Another prediction, we believe that by 2020, use of SAS in DevOps will exceed use of DAS because SAS, high degree of DevOps enablement. That is what is happening. There are special requirements for DevOps that we've discussed, such as transparency, such as rapid uh, implementation. And DAS has a serious challenge. It's a black box technology. It has no insight into application. So in order to compensate for its deficiency, for its lack of insight, it has to do very continuous crawling along the application, try to find where attacks are possible and making sense. And when it finds such a place, it launches an excessive number of attacks to compensate for the lack of understanding what's happening beneath the user interface. It all takes a lot of time, dynamic tests, often runs many hours, sometimes day. Definitely, it's not a good match in its current form to DevOps that requires multiple releases every day. But if you look at static analysis, it has already offered that developer static analysis and um, uh, team static analysis. Therefore, we're saying that SAS, as of now, is better equipped to address issues of uh, compliance with DevOps. Therefore, we believe that the use of static analysis for DevOps will exceed use of dynamic testing for DevOps. So what's going to happen with uh, DAS? Well, look at our next prediction that through 2020, about a quarter of enterprises that adopt the DevOps will also adopt IS. IS, that technology built with envisioning DevOps, it's always up and running. It is continuous, it is transparent, and 
best can be an inducer to IS. Well, so it, the future of DEST might be an integration with IS, although you can ask IS without DEST using some embedded inducers or just quality assurance and user acceptance um, testing scenarios. In my last prediction here is that for 2019, more than 40% of enterprises will adopt SCA to secure the DevOps supply chain. Today, we would estimate that SC adoption is somewhat in excess of 20%, but more and more organizations understand that today's development is as much an assembly as it is homegrown code writing. Therefore, we believe that within a couple of years, more than 40% of enterprises will adopt that software composition analysis. So my recommendation here starts with adoption. I would recommend you to start adoption of application security technology with traditional static, dynamic, and software composition analysis. Number one, they are fundamental, and number two, they are very mature. But they are evolving towards accepting DevOps requirements. They're evolving into something like developer or team static analysis. So start with them. And when it comes to choice between tools and services, Look at services first because tools are more transparent and more scalable. They better satisfy CICD, DevOps requirements. And once we adopted these technologies, in parallel, continue watching and trying and adopting transform technologies, such as developer static analysis, such as team static analysis, and also evaluate new technologies such as IS and RESP and maybe even adopt them, of course, it will depend on your level of risk tolerance because they're not as mature. And apply all technologies together, the new technologies, transform technologies, and traditional technologies, just at the right phase of the life cycle. They all have their own place. None should be thrown out. And watch the market because more innovation and transformation is coming. What is coming? Actually, what is coming is a new era of application security, and that is true because nowadays we are facing really next generation of technologies that have practically never existed before. They're just several years old. We have technology that offers application self-testing application self-diagnostics, application self-protection. They offer developer static analysis that is always at developer's fingertips and very rapid, measure it in second, and can be applied continuously and incrementally. Well, we are facing new markets with new demands, demands for transparency of technology, so developers don't need to run it but also enjoy their results. With a high speed measured in seconds, Technology that are incremental and could be applied continuously. We are facing new paradigms as well. First of all, cloud and DevSecOps with their requirements and their need for each other. We are facing new competition, by the way. Technologies or vendor rather that we previously either ignored or even not noticed. For example, open source. Open source is coming out as a potential vendors, and in several years, it will make a competition to existing uh, vendors on the market. Also, there are promise coming from cloud providers, such as Google and Amazon. They make a promise to become application security providers, and this is all in addition to already overcrowded application security market. So what do we have to do? We have to plan and build and adopt new technologies, new practices, new culture, and also and also new spending patterns. Believe it or not, but typically ITs are spending on application security only 5%, 1 20th, only 5% of what they spend on network security, although network security doesn't have insight into application and cannot effectively protect applications. So think of your spending patterns and with all this, I can only say that welcome to that troubling and challenging 
but also exciting new era of application security. Thank you. I have several questions here on the screen, so let me try to answer them. I'll read the way it's written. Wouldn't Ceph cover SCA scans if the developers uploaded the source code into the third party library as part of their Ceph scanning? Um, my answer is this. Ceph and SCA are two different technologies. One with a deep insight into application that analyzes application like compiler that uh, also builds logic and data flow trying to envision where an application is vulnerable or can be attacked and this is SAS technology. SCA doesn't have that insight but it owns information about coming from generally available sources technology uh, information about the vulnerability of a particular application. They could be used separately, but to answer your question, my recommendation is that they should be used together. And those codes, those components, home written and from open source, they can reside in the very same repository. So I would recommend to use both technologies, static analysis to go through technologies written by the organization and then detecting presence of open source components and also testing them. Uh, another question, can one use SCA to evaluate the software a company has developed to see if it's all their code or can they find bad code from other companies open source? If I understand your question correctly, you're asking whether static analysis can analyze the open source components. Yes, it does. Yes, it can go into the code and find vulnerabilities there. The, it's not very often done. It's actually very seldom done because of what if you detect a vulnerability as an organization, uh, you have no influence practically on the open source. You can only post your response that you detected some vulnerabilities with expectation that open some source community at some point in time will uh, fix the vulnerability. Uh, one more question. Uh, you spoke of automation. How critical is the role of automation in securing DevOps? Shall we try to automate all security processes and technology? So how critical is it? Okay, I understand. Uh, how critical the role of uh, automation? You know, I hear sometimes, and I read sometimes, actually pretty often, that Automation is absolutely mandatory and you must automate your security technologies. But that is not true or not exactly true. It depends on what kind of security technology you're automating. Let's take your system's static analysis, your traditional SAS that you use at the very end of the life cycle that runs for many hours, maybe day. Of course, you can automate invocation of that static analysis but you run it how many times through the life cycle? Once, twice? What is the benefit of automatic invocation? Yeah, automated, that's not bad. But the real benefit would be if you're automating not traditional static analysis, but developer static analysis, that every single developer will be invoking automatically upon compiling that piece of code he or she just written. And that testing will be run Hundreds, and by the way, we have some organizations already adopted that process. They run many hundreds of times their security tests that are under developer fingertips. That kind of technology worth to be automated. Of course, same is true about technologies such as IS, but irony is there that IS and REST, of course, they generally speaking don't need automation because they're automated by default. Once you install them on the server, as long as server is running there, working and detecting and protecting. I believe these are all of the questions that I received. Um, ah, one more. 
Hi, Joseph. Do you see RASP as a technology capable of creating success and or death? What are your thoughts? Well, two type of thoughts. Some of them are generic. Some of them are kind of specific. Generically, through my career and for many years, I, I've been Gartner analyst. I've never seen a technology that completely disappeared. You still can find organizations, for example, that run uh, Power Builder, for example. So um, I cannot see any technology disappearing completely. That's my generic answer. So I don't see RASP just based on these general principles will replace technologies such as SAS and that. Now, let's be specific. Let's take static analysis. No, RASP cannot replace static analysis because RASP starts with the letter R, which means runtime. Runtime application civil protection, meaning that RASP will work, as well as IS, by the way, only when application is up and running. But what about the programming phase? It takes so much time, so much effort. Do you want to skip testing? SAS is the only technology that can be applied at programming phase when application is not up and running yet. And there are now new versions of SAS, which I call developer SAS, that enable developer to test any single um, snippet of the code. No, SAS faces no challenge from RASP. Now, what about DEST? Well, uh, I believe you're actually asking not about REST versus DEST, but IS. See, RASP is a runtime technology, and DEST is a testing technology. So I would rather compare not REST, but IS with that. That's the fair comparison. Will IS replace DEST? I would rather see it as an integration between IS agent and DEST as an inducer. As I said earlier, IS can run without inducer, just under using uh, taint analysis, just under the flaw of quality assurance or user acceptance scenario. That is fine. But you can also use DEST as an inducer, launching specially designed, designed by most serious hackers, attacks that would IS engine supposedly detect. So, no, there is no direct. Um, threat to SEST, absolutely not. And RASP, or actually IS, can work together with DEST. And I believe this is my last question. Thank you very much once again for your attention.